Guys, so uh, today I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, I'm gonna be going through a how I composite things in Fusion, um, how I go from Blender to Fusion, and I'm gonna kind of move fast just so I don't uh, get I don't want you guys to get bored. So this is what uh, this is what we're doing. So you already saw the intro video, and that is what we'll be doing today. So for let's start out in Blender. What I did was I modeled this bottle and the cap. UV unwrapped it. I animated. The bottle, I didn't animate it in like real time. Uh, what I did was I had it in real time and then I animated it in slow motion, which I wouldn't recommend. I just, I would uh, render it in real time and then export it in, in Fusion as like, uh, I don't know, 120 frames and then just do a speed ramp. I, wouldn't, I probably won't do this method again. Um, and then I added the lid, um, it was a child of constraint to, uh, to, the, uh, to the bottle. And then I had to animate a few things, uh, like the lid screwing off. Uh, so that is what I did, and now I did not render it in Blender. Uh, if you know me and seen my uh, other some of my other videos, you know that I try to render as much as I can in Fusion, just because I feel like you don't have to do as much work to get photorealistic results. And in Blender, you have to do all sorts of works, uh, extra extra stuff, just to get it to look somewhat good. And so I try to do it in Fusion as much as I can. Now that's just my personal preference. Obviously, you can get very photorealistic results in Blender. Um, so okay, so what I did uh, was in so I, so in order to keep the animation and keep our shapes looking good, uh, I export it as an alembic mesh. So what you do is you go to File, uh, Export. Make sure you have your object selected. You're going to go to alembic, which is ABC. It should uh, you shouldn't need to go to your preferences. It should automatically be a, um, um, selected or showing and what you're going to do is leave all this the same and then you're just going to click on selected objects and then hit export alembic now i've already exported this so i'm not going to do that but then even though this lid has a constraint to it you'll still need to export this as an alembic on its own um, so once you do that you are done with blender and again i did mention that i did uv unwrap these and got their normal setup and uh, was able to do some UV editing with the texture that I'll be using, um, which is, I was gonna do something with a C4 uh, pre-workout, but uh, I wasn't able to UV unwrap it the best. So I just did whatever. Um, okay. Anyways, so I just UV unwrapped it, and then I brought everything in to Fusion. So that looks pretty awesome. That's, this is, like obviously you can achieve this result in Blender. I just feel like I understand Fusion a lot better, and so I try to stick with Fusion. And I feel like uh, I don't know, it's a lot. It's a lot easier to use, and it's a lot easier to read doing massive node trees than doing a massive node tree uh, tree in Blender. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the main heart, and that's going to be our Merge 3D. So the Merge 3D is what brings everything together. We have our camera, our lights, and we have our meshes with our materials and you want to keep everything nice and readable this is not a good example of readable this is an example of what you shouldn't do even though it is somewhat organized it is still very very hard to read you definitely have to look at it and get a little bit meticulous now uh, what so this goes left to right and top to bottom the industry standard in nuke it goes top to bottom um, just it's easier going left to right you find yourself scrolling like crazy I guess either way you're gonna be scrolling like crazy um, so yeah okay so let's go to our merge we're gonna hit two so we can see it in the viewer let's give us a little space and we are going to zoom out okay so real quick uh, what we need to do when you first enter this what you'll have to do is you have to imp, uh, export your Alembic mesh or sorry, not export, you'll have to import your Lambic Mesh. If you click and drag it from the desktop, um, here's our bottle, and you try to put it in here just like that, you'll notice it won't work. What you have to do is you have to hit Shift Space, type in Lambic Mesh 3D, and then you go through and you select, oh hey, there's my bottle ABC, it's moving, and you've got it imported. 
and there it is. And if you move the animation, you'll see that your bottle moves. Uh, so I'm on a laptop, it's a little bit slow. But um, so then what we do, boom, uh, added a bunch of lights. Here I have a spotlight that uh, it gives it kind of like a backlighting. And then I have a point light, which is on this lower area that gives it like a red, a nice red little uh, little glow almost, just something really simple. And then it help add a little bit of depth to it. Um, I added another white, like just regular white light to uh, shine over here, uh, just to really emphasize that it is a spherical object, it's not flat. And so what we have to do is we have to put our materials in. So here we have our pre-workout thing that I was working with, uh, that I just created. Uh, again, I was gonna do a C4 sort of thing, um, but I was having issues unwrapping that in Blender. And so what I did was I used the cook torrents as a material. Here we have that material, and then I added a reflect map, and I made it a little bit spicy on the reflect map. What you can do is you just go to fast noise, and you'll have that as your reflection intensity material. And so that'll obviously uh, decide what, how intense you have something. And you can tweak with the scale. With it, this is the fast noise that's doing it. Now, if you're doing a fast noise, you don't have to, uh, you don't need to channel booleans just because there's already an alpha channel. So whenever you're working with the cook torrents, you always need an alpha channel for everything in here except for the butt map and the diffuse. And so here I have my brightness and color. Uh, what I did was I created a butt map. Um, as you can see right here, it pops out a little bit. And that's what goes into the uh, torrents and the reflect. And then um, for the for the popping out areas, I wanted that to be shinier than the uh, than the main material. So I did an invert color, and then I did channel booleans, and then I did the default whoop, come on, uh, to red. You can do like green, blue, whatever. Uh, I just default, just go to red. <clears throat> you can do whatever. Uh, but then, so then for the lid, first off, guys, you will always want to to uh, rename these. We'll let you. So let's see here. This one is the bottle. This alembic mesh is, come on, is the lid. You might, you might want to keep the alembic in there, alembic lid. There are my wiener dogs. So, hey, no, come, come sit down. Come on. Man. Okay, yep, and then there's our material for our lid. And it should look identical to the bottle other than there's no logo. Okay, so then we have our camera set up. We have our spotlights set up. And then we render it out. So we have a render, and that is what it looks like. Um, just the image. It looks pretty good, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll like it a lot. And so if you come up to our render, um, I normally it's the default, it's a software render. I try going to the OpenGL whenever I can. I know with uh, doing particles, you can't do the OpenGL render. Um, you need the software render. Um, obviously enable lighting and enable shadows. And then you should be good to go. Um, now some people do have a hard time trying to figure out where the motion blur is. Like, how do I add motion blur? Well, you want to come to the settings. It's going to be unchecked and you'll check it. You can tweak things. Uh, doing the 180, that's like the default like film uh, shutter, so that's what I keep it at. And you can crank the quality up or whatever. And then right out of the render, to keep things looking as realistic as possible, so oftentimes it'll come out and it'll be looking super sharp. So you will want to add a little bit of a blur to it. And when I'm saying a little bit of a blur, I mean like 0.3, like it's almost unnoticeable, but it's just a little bit. Then I add a little bit of film grain just to add a little bit more realism on there, um, just so it's not so perfect. And then what I did was I created the cool background. So here's our cool background right here. If we view that, I'll show you how I did that. So it's the miracle of the fast noise, okay? Fast noise. So first I created the main solid background. So what I did was got a fast noise. I don't think I even tweaked it. Oh yeah, yeah, I did tweak it. Okay, so I cranked the detail up, increased the contrast, uh, made it, you know, just, just tweaked a few things. Um, and then I made, put it as a, uh, um, a matte 
to, or a mask, there we go, a mask for this background. Now the background, it isn't just a regular background. This uh, line in the middle and going out, that is a gradient. Uh, I did a radial gradient. And so if I take, if I turn off the fast noise, you can see it's just like, it's just nothing special, nothing special. Turn it back on, boom, that's looking pretty good. And I put that into the background, come over here to our merge. Let's go ahead and view our merge. And what I did was I had another polygon uh, as a mask, and I just kind of made it kind of random and weird. Just just something that's a little bit, uh, just kind of funky. And then I did do the soft edge, just so, I mean, obviously if you tighten it up, it's gonna look kind of, it's gonna look pretty weird. So I did do the soft edge, I don't think I did that hard. Something like that. Um, and then that was a fast noise. But the, but so the fast noise with the polygon were a mask for the main background, which was just red. Um, and then that was, so if you look over here, gradient, red in the dark area, alpha in the white area, just so you don't really need a composite mode, but I still think I did do a composite mode. So I, yeah, I did overlay, um, just so, so it'll be bright in the bright areas and see-through on the see-through areas, where there isn't a lot of uh, smoke or steam, whatever. Then I just put that into the foreground of a regular background, and boom, there you have it. And then I put that into the background of our foreground, and boom, there you have our cool composite right there. And then to spice things up a little bit, I added another merge, and I got a, there's like a free dust asset thing you can get from Premium Beat or Rocket Stock, probably both actually. Uh, great places, great places to visit. And boom, there we have our final composite. Get out a bitmap, add some film grain. Hey, quick! And that is, uh, that's how you do it. That's how we did it on this video. And obviously, hey, shoot it! I gotta get going. Um, so that was a little fast. All the stuff over here is all, uh, they're all particle emitters right here. So, anyways, I'll see you guys later, and uh, good luck.